Okay, let's see what we got for the news today. Uh oh, Dai Kaiser. The awning different fight would definitely be psyched about this. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Hi everybody, this is CBGS. I'm the captain here, and on this recap for the Vanguard live stream on 1st June 2021, we'll be taking a look at the reviews and sharing our collective thoughts on them. Before we talk about the elephant in the room, for me at least, we should follow up from last week regarding producer Maury's letter volume 2 which came out last Friday. Most of the information on the letter is actually brought forward from producer Maury's previous Q&As which we have talked about in previous recaps. But a new piece of information that we gleaned from the producer's letter is that on the English release roadmap, there hasn't been any indication of the collab sets that were announced in Japanese. But producer Mori has said in the letter that there's going to be a Bushiro English Conference 2021 summer where an official announcement on the matter will be made. No word on when that is going to happen just yet. Now moving on to overdress news, we got a bit to talk about what is coming to DBT02. And as our poll on the community tab show, it starts with what 48% of you guys voted for, which are FRONT TRIGGERS HAVE A PLUS 5K SHIELD! Yes, as we have seen on Tuesday, new front triggers are in DBT-02 and they all have the continuous skill on the Guardian Circle. If your opponent's Vanguard is grade 3 or higher, this unit gets plus 5k shield. This is relatively big as we have a total 20k shield from a front trigger which could make guards a lot easier to fulfill when players are using math to kill you. So if we carry the number forward, we will get an equation that's equivalent to 23k and that is a magic number. Add that up with another 10k from the booster plus its power and we will get... Oh yeah, it's all coming together now. These front triggers are fantastic cards for most decks that use front triggers like Bastion and Seraph Snow. Even for me, a violence boost player, it's a strong consideration for me to play less draws and maybe criticals for the extra guarding capabilities and the full frontal power. On specific right line boosts, we got two new card reveals for Magnolia and Seraph Snow. Let the Waifu Wars commence. For Magnolia, they got a new order card and a grade 2 unit card that offers a lot of what is missing for Magnolia in DBT01. Wild Intelligence is a grade 0 normal order card which costs Counterblast 1 to play it. Send the top 3 cards from your deck to the drop zone and choose a unit with the same or lower grade than your Vanguard, than your Vanguard, and call it to a regard circle. If your Vanguard is Sylvan Horn Beast King Magnolia, choose 2 units instead of 1. This is interesting to note because it's a very very good card for Magnolia in terms of helping Magnolia get units back from the drop zone when they are removed from the regard circle. I had my worries about this card being used by Zorga with Alka Magic, but considering the amount of choices they already have with two new order cards in DBT02, there might be spot for choice that they can't consider this card. I can't say anything further on that and anything can happen after June 25th. Silver Home Beast Dai Mainaru is the triple R for Magnolia and this grade 2 unit has the following skills. When placed on the Regard Circle, if your Vanguard is Silver Home Beast King Magnolia, choose one of your Regards and for the turn they can attack from the back row and get plus 5k power. His other skill on the Regard Circle, once per turn when this unit is chosen by your Vanguard's ability, for that turn this unit gets plus 5k power. <laughs> This is perhaps one of the biggest card reveals from this week. One of the biggest drawbacks that Magnolia has is the fact that it comes up short when you come to Sona Ride. And with Dai Mai Naru, it helps cover those turns when you can't do that. And the second skill is superb for after he has been called down. If you choose this unit with Magnolia's skill, whether you have Persona right or not, Dainai Maru becomes a 20k power attacker which puts a 10k guard pressure on the opponent Vega. This card is absolutely needed for Magnolia and I'm happy to see that these decks are getting some good boosts that directly address their flaws that they have after DVD-01. Sarah Snow wasn't left in the dust of the Waifu Wars here as she has some new members among the Aurora Battle Princesses with Derry Violet and Perio Turquoise joining her side. Aurora Battle Princess Derry Violet When placed on the Guardian Circle, if one or more of your opponent's cards are imprisoned, by playing Soul Blast 1, choose one of your units and it cannot be hit by a grade 2 or lower unit attack until the end of that battle. 
Sarah Snow has a great two perfect guard essentially. Art's amazing in my opinion, Mabel's still better. But from the looks of things, Sarah Snow going to DBT-02 wants to keep the pressure of keeping units in prison for strong effects like these, which can help with guards against strong attackers like Diablo's Boys Eden and Virena among others. And as Star is emphasized further with Aurora Battle Princess Perio Turquoise, continuous on the Regard Circle, if two or more of your opponent's cards are in prison, this unit gets plus 5k power. This is similar to Agra Rouge in that regard. But although on the front row regard circle, when your opponent's card that was in prison is called to a regard circle, that unit gets minus 5k power until the end of the turn. This is the gnarly skill that Perio Turquoise has. This is the one card that really incentivizes keeping that prison filled up. Because if you have two of her on the front row regard circle, anything your opponent wants to retrieve from prison will become absolute zero in power. Making your opponent think twice about retrieving prisoners is a big boon to Sarah Snow in terms of keeping those 3 or more cards in prison for Sarah Snow to activate her continuous skills while saving resources for other powerful skills to use them. Opponents who need their cards from prison to get going, they will need to remove Perio Turquoise one way or another, making them a perfect target to take some heat off of Sarah Snow or other strong attackers in your deck. Those are all of the reveals from the Tuesday's livestream, but there have been new reveals posted on socials for the English Exclusive Revival Collection, as well as the v Clyde Collections Volumes 1 and 2. For the Revival Collection, there's a lot of key cards here that's actually being printed for the Revival Collection that's coming out in English only. I won't go into each and every card being reprinted in the Revival Collection, but what I can say is that I remember playing with and against these cards back in their prime, minus the V-Premium and new cards of course. I can safely say that these reprints are highly recommended for anybody looking to pick up cards for premium play. There have been rumours that we may see a new restriction list based on what is revealed to be coming in the Revival Collection and the VK Collections Volumes 1 and 2, but I personally cannot read any further than that. We're gonna have to wait for more information as they come out. What has my attention right now is the latest reveals that were shown to us for Dimension Police and Nova Grappler in the v Clan Collections Volumes 1 and 2. And we are getting Super Dimensional Robo Die Kaiser and Automobile Riser Mega Flare and Dual Flare. And this flipped to very different people into very different directions with two different card reveals that are shown differently. Hint, hint, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. To complete the report, we have Dimensional Robo Die Prop, Dimensional Robo Kaizad, and Super Dimensional Robo Die Kaiser revealed for Dimension Police. Wild Over Grappler will see Raptoria Riser, Ultimate Riser Dual Flare, and Ultimate Riser Mega Flare in the VK collections. Previews of his skills were shown as well that hint on what kind of skills that we can get from them. It's a really good way to tease them while we are waiting for closer to September for the full reveals. Die Prop will have a draw skill on the Vanguard Circle and can power up your Vanguard when it's in the Regard Circle. Kaiser has a powerful skill that when he's rolled upon, as well as being a powerful Rhaegar. And Dai Kaiser himself can make an attack that only Sentinels can block. But even then, he can break through them with the power of justice. For Nova Grappler's side, Raptorian Riser can change the name of your rear guards into Risers and can summon Riser units from the deck according to the situation. Dual Fair powers up both itself and the Vanguard as well as provide a way to counter charge. And Mega Flare himself can restand your Riser Vanguards to perform a plethora of attacks potentially having a stronger skill when combined with Dual Flare. To be brief, Dai Kaiser and Ultimate Risers are hinting at their classic skills coming to V Premium, which is very welcome. The new units too as well with Die Prop's draw capabilities being a great boon, while Raptoria Riser can actually make sure that you keep your key units in the Nova Grappler deck in there with his robot Asha powers. We've all seen the hype and joy that Different Fight has for Dai Kaiser, and I am truly happy to see his favourite card come to V Series in such a spectacular fashion. But I can't help to say on the other side on that coin, there's me and Ultimate Riser. People who know me well on this channel know that Perfect Riser is my favourite card. And for all 10 years of Vanguard, the Riser subclans has never lived up to what Perfect Riser could do in any sense. And after 3 years of Riserless boost on V-Series, on top of what happened to Risers or like they're off in the Strike era, I have kept hope for so long and I ended up being destroyed by it in the end. So for me to see Ultimate Risers coming to V-Series was that familiar shot of hope I didn't want to feel anymore. Forgive me for burying my heart in soul here, but I am too broken up by Vanguard's past that I can't throw myself over the moon for what's going to come for Risers. I have no doubt that Ultimate Risers is going to be very good. It is Mori-san and his team that's handling this boost after all. 
but I have to wait and see what the full review is before I could really get excited for Rises once again. I really don't want to end this review on a downer, so the last bit of information that I'll share is that next week's news is going to be a big one, as we're going to be seeing the encounter cards in full with Draconic Overlord and Phantom Blaster and their skill reviews. And you can be sure we'll cover that here on next week's recap. Also, here's an extra question that I leave to you guys. Why the f*** is Draconic Overlord the Cross have a Legion and Strike skill? So what do you guys think? Which side of the Waifu Wars are you on? Serastone or Magnolia? Are you going to be playing the extra shield front triggers? Leave your comments below. If you want to be part of the live conversation with us on Overdress and Vanguard, we're on Twitch for the Tuesday's live streams and Wednesdays for our discussion streams here on YouTube. So be sure to follow us on Twitch for our gaming live streams, slam that like and subscribe button and ring the ding the bell so you get notified of all of our videos whenever they release, be it for Vanguard or Battle Spirits. Be sure to follow us on all of our socials, we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we also have a Discord as well where you can find myself, Dempster and Leon on most nights. If you like what we do here and want to support us directly, you can join our membership where you can be like Wen Hao Law, Daniel Aguieto, and Samuel McKay and have access to all of our meet emotes and badges during our premieres and live streams. So with that said, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye